Hello, my beautiful planty people, and how are you doing today? I hope you are great. I am doing well. Today is part two to my repot Q&A thing that we did last Friday. No, that we did last Tuesday. <laughs> this is part two. Um... Sorry it didn't come out when it was supposed to, but you know, like things happen and I'm still struggling with software that they say they're going to fix, but I'm still waiting, <laughs> but I'm hopeful. Uh, so for those of you who are new here, hi, hello, welcome. My name is Nikki. This is my channel, Plants, Pots, and Whatnot. And for my GFPs, my gluttons for punishment, my loves that keep on coming back for more, I love you to bitty bits. And you look so good today. Look at you go. <laughs> Anywho, so let's go ahead and jump on into this. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into part two of my repot with me Q&A, ask me questions, chit chat <laughs> video. We're back. I keep getting child interrupted. Um, <laughs> so um, before I start this, uh, let me explain what I'm doing first. Okay, so we're just actually um, gonna use this same pot that I just took the Bird of Paradise out of. Um, there's nothing wrong with reusing a pot as long as it didn't have, um, you know, any sort of issues. If there was pests on the plant or in the soil, I wouldn't have used it. Um, if it has some sort of weird fungus or something, I wouldn't have used it, but there's nothing wrong with using, reusing pots without washing them. Um, like nothing at all. So anyway, um, and I made a whole bunch of these moss poles. Um, you may or may not have seen in the last video. Um, I made a couple, so I obviously have to cut this down, but this is going to go right in the center of this pot, but not quite up this high. And then we're going to wrap and uh, Velcro the plant to it. Um, so that's what we're doing. So let's work on the next question while I do that. So Brenda, hi Brenda. Uh, hi Nikki. Okay, here goes something for your questions repotting day. Do you prefer plants trailing or on moss poles? Um, honestly, I, I, I think <laughs> making lots of noise here. I think like in order to have like a well-rounded, uh, nicely curated collection, you really have to have a combination. <laughs> Woo! Holy shnikes, Batman. Um, it's really nice to have a combination of all of those, right? Like I can't imagine having just only trailing plants or only climbing plants. So I have a, I got that pretty good. Okay, let me get some soil in here. I'm gonna stick something in the ceiling fan, I know it. All right, um, anyway, yeah, I think you really have to have like, I'm making so much noise. <laughs> this is going really well today, guys. Um, I like having my, you know, my trailing plants so that I can have, break up those lines. You know what I mean? Um, I like having them trailing down my wall, like in my living wall that you guys saw me do on Wednesday. Um, I like having plants that trail over, um, like shelving units, uh, because it just gives, like it breaks up the lines from the shelf and it's not just like, you know what I mean? I hope that makes sense. Um. Yeah, I just can't imagine having, I, I don't have a preference, like at all. I like having both in my collection. Um, <laughs> I suck at this so bad. I know I keep saying that, but I feel badly because I'm just like not getting it together here. Um, so Brenda's next question is, what are the best moss poles to buy? Um, you know what? I don't really know if there's like a best moss pole to buy. The, uh, if you like keeping your moss poles moist, the self-watering moss poles are great. How am I gonna do this? 
You know what? I'm going to have to stick the moss pole in after. Um, so watering moss poles are amazing. I love them. And Trofolia has some really great self-watering moss poles. And I think Vesture and Vines, I think I was supposed to tag them in a video and I forgot. Um, I'll put those both down below if uh, I believe they both ship worldwide. What am I doing? I need to put the plant in here. <laughs> Guys, this is a shit show. <laughs> Man. Okay. And this, folks, is why we don't do Q&As very often, because Nikki can't function. Um, but honestly, uh, so if you're going to buy them, those are some great places to buy them from. I know Amazon also has those core pulls. Um, but if you want my personal, personal favorite way to do moss pulls, it's just to make them yourself. Um, if, if you're the type of person that likes to do that sort of thing, if you don't have the time to like make a moth pole and it's just not your jam, um, I like making things, so I like making my moth poles. Um, but honestly, I find it's a, it's a cheaper way for sure. Because uh, you can get, you know, if, if you buy, like for example, that 120 liter uh, condensed moss that I have, um, yes, it cost me like $80, but that thing has lasted me. I think I've had it almost a year and I've made lots of moss poles, done tons of propagations. Um, so it's really like it's bang for your buck there. And then to buy like these little uh, bamboo poles, they're like next to nothing um, at most nurseries. Um, you can also, I think, get them on Amazon if that's your jam. Um, and you can just do a lot more with them and it depends on how big your collection is too. If you have a really big co uh, collection, um, financially, it doesn't make sense to buy them regardless of whether you, where you buy them from. It really does make more sense to make them on your own. Um, it will save you a lot of money in the long run. Now I'm not saying don't buy them. I fully support, especially these local companies that I love so much. I love the people behind them. Um, and I'm not saying don't buy them, but if you're the type of person that likes to make things and has a lot of plants to do, it's definitely more financially uh, wise to just make them on your own. This is so tangled up. <laughs> I'm so bad at this. This is going to be like the world's longest video. I've been trying to keep them a little bit shorter lately. Is that even true? Have I? I don't know. I'm where where are you going where around there okay we're working it out oh okay I think this is like the worst moss pole to have in there too it was so short it was like a last minute just stick it in there kind of thing all right I'm gonna stand up okay let me see if I can answer a question um she says or would it just work to velcro the plants like a golden pothos to a bamboo pole uh so when it comes to moss poles here let me just give you my personal 411 on moss poles oh so a lot of plants will climb will attach themselves to something uh, to climb up. It helps them grow faster. It makes them feel like they are more in their own environment. Where's my butter knife? <laughs> this is a hot mess. Um, and they will definitely benefit from something like that. All right, this is plastic. I can squeeze it. Nice. Um, does it really matter what? Yes and no. Yes and no. Some plants really want to dig roots in. Uh, Monstera, Deliciosa, um, really like to securely attach themselves. And I put way too much soil in that pot. Shocker. One of these days, I'll get it together. <laughs> if you could see the amount of soil all over the place and on my floor... 
you'd probably be yelling at me right now. Um, I'm just going to reuse the soil that's in here anyway. Okay. <laughs> So the pots are about the same size. However, um, in order to put a tall pole in something, I need a pot that's got a little more heft. So I wanted to use a terracotta pot. Cause I wanna, okay? Can you even see? Can you even see? Do I even have you? Oh, horrible, horrible. Okay. <laughs> Oh, am I even going to post this video? Probably. So we can all laugh at me together. Okay. I'm going to poke right down in the center there. Perfect. Now I'll back you up. There. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> this should be a little bit easier to manage. I have made such a huge mess. <clears throat> anyway. Plants like a pothos, um, they'll grip on most, I mean, most plants really, let's be honest, will grip onto pretty much anything. Um, example, my Monstera Dubaya just decided it was going to climb up the wall and they, they are able to do that. The aerial roots on plants are much more <laughs> capable of sticking to pretty much anything than you would think. Um, but I would definitely recommend giving it something, whether that's a plank of wood, uh, a moss pole, uh, a bamboo pole, I would probably say not as much. It, they can't stick to that. And that's what they want to do. They want to grip onto something like they would if they were in the wild. Um, now as a support, you know, that's fine to do, but if you are looking to have it for uh, like large growth and, or something like that uh, long term, I definitely recommend something that they will actually adhere to. If that makes any sense. I hope it's making sense. I'm trying. I'm trying. Push that pole down in there a little. I guess, yeah, it just depends on what your, your goal is. If you want the plant to attach to something or just give it stability. Um, bamboo doesn't give something to grip onto. I suck at this. I suck at this. Okay. <laughs> uh, where were we? Uh, Tress Gooch says, sup, Nikki. Sup, girl. Um, do you keep a spreadsheet or an app to keep track of plants you own and the last time you watered? I need organizational advice badly. Uh, okay. So that's the first part of that comment. Um, I don't. Um, and I was just actually talking to somebody about this the other day. I, I, if you have a smaller collection or if you get an app like that, or a spreadsheet like that at the beginning of your plant journey when things aren't super crazy, when you don't have a super huge collection, um, then, you know, that's definitely something that you can, can do or use. I don't. Um, I am also like not a person who schedules plant care. <clears throat> I check my plants fairly frequently. Now my situation is a lot different because I'm home all the time. So I have the ability to, to spend extra time with plants that may need. Oh, actually I can't do two things at once. Why am I doing this? Somebody answer that question for me. Q and A you. Oh, there's a leaf stuck. Okay. I'm going to put that one right there. Uh, 
Um, there are apps out there. I encourage you, however, if you're going to look for an app to use, to find one that allows you to input the schedule and that doesn't choose your um, your watering schedule for you. Uh, I've seen a few that will have, like if you enter that you have like a snake plant, it will be like snake plant, water, you know, it will notify you to water every like 10 days or whatever. I don't recommend you do that. <laughs> I mean, unless you enjoy killing your plants. Um, what's up with this one? Oh, it rooted right. Okay. All right. We'll work with you, not against you. How about that? Um, so yeah, find one that, that allows you to input the information. And I encourage you to, if you want to start something like that, if you're like an organizational person, start it early in your plant journey, unless you have a lot of time that you can go around and input, um, information. I tried to do that once, but a year and a half ago, I found this app and it was really cool. Um, you know, I definitely would have recommended it uh, if I could remember what it was called, but I don't. Um, but it had decent ratings on the app store. And, but I had so many plants at that time that when I tried to like input all the information, it was just taking forever because you go around to each individual plant, you take a picture of your personal plant, upload that into the app. And then, you know, you go in there, you write the name, wh when you got it, how often you personally want to water it, which I thought was so, so cool. But the time it was taking for me to actually input all the information was far too long. And it was just really not working out okay i think we got all the vines attached for the most part there's a couple little ones here that will get attached later but i think she looks so much better she's got some place that she can climb and grow of course i'm at a water all right all right, we'll get her watered in and then I'm just going to go ahead, sit down, answer some more questions, and then we're going to end this video because this is crazy. Um, maybe next time I do a q and A, I'll just literally sit down and talk to you. <laughs> or maybe we'll do a live q and A and then I can just answer questions while I talk to you. Let me grab some water. All right. Better settle down in there a little. All right. Okay. Let's sit down and answer some questions. That was a lot. Okay. Now I can give you my undivided attention. <laughs> um, Anyway, as far as being organized with your plants, it really depends on the type of person that you are. I know a lot of people that use spreadsheets like Excel sheets and stuff like that. And if you're like an Excel spreadsheet kind of person, absolutely. Uh, a lot of people really swear by those and they can input the information and modify them as necessary. Uh, Excel is a great program to use for something like that. Uh, if you're more of an app person, go ahead and find one of those plant apps that you can input information. Those are also great. Um, <clears throat> I just personally am not that kind of person. Uh, I am extremely organized, but not necessarily, um, you know, as far as like creating something like that. It just depends on the person, but try those two things, spreadsheets or the apps. Um, they work really well uh, if, if that's your jam. <clears throat> uh, she also says, I'd be curious to hear uh, some plant bloopers or funny plant stories. Uh, I'll toss one out for you. Uh, so she says in 2019, my, uh, for Christmas, my mom bought me a little glass orb with some kind of air plant in it. By the fall of 2020, I was still watering and misting the damn thing and it wouldn't grow. It turns out it was plastic. <laughs> I've seen that before. Don't be down on yourself. I mean, <laughs> It happens. There are some really realistic looking fake plants, but hey, I mean, I'm sure that the plant appreciated it. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, 
I don't know if I have any that are like super funny. That one with the tortum was definitely, like I said, I wish I had a got that on camera because it was just like a series of unfortunate events kind of situation. And, you know, now I'm stuck with this little guy that I'm going to put back in this pot. I'm just going to fill it up and let him regrow and prey on the rest of the plants. Uh, but off the top of my head, I can't think of anything. Normally anything that blooper related that I do during a video, I'll, if I can, I try to put it at the end of the video. Cause I don't know about you guys. I love watching bloopers. I find them hilarious. And, um, <clears throat> so as much as I can, I try to put them at the end of my video. So if you're not somebody who watches to the end, well, A, you probably won't be seeing this because this is a long ass video. Uh, and B, uh, go check out the end. Of the Usually I'll put like with bloopers or something, but not always. So make sure you watch to the end just in case you want to tee hee <laughs> with me or at me, whichever. Uh, okay, next question. Valerie Scott Keys says, hi, love you. Love you too. Uh, I'm new to your channel. Have you ever spotted a pest on a plant of yours and instead of removing the plant and washing it and treating it, you just spray it with neem oil or horticultural spray or whatever your pest killer of choice is right there on the spot because you don't have the time uh, right then to go through the proper method? That was a long question. Um, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, there are times where I'm not doing like a full uh, plant care sort of day where if I'm kind of going around and it's not even necessarily that I'll spray it on the spot. A lot of the times I will just, you know, cause I do check my plants very frequently and I'm, um, a huge advocate of, of going around if you can once a day and especially to the, the pest prone plants, ones that you know, you've seen them on it before, just flip a few leaves. My battery just died again. <laughs> That's three. And now my neighbor is using his saw. So but I'm just going to talk through it. I'm just going to talk through it. Um, anyway, so sometimes I'll just go around and like squish. Uh, usually it's thrips. If I see thrips or spider mites, um, there's something about mealybugs that I can't bring myself to actually squish my fingers. I find it really gross. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's been a lot of times and then I'll just like come back to it when I have time to like actually treat the plant properly. I'll bring it to the kitchen. I'll spray it down and all of those sorts of things. And I mean, you get to a point in, in your plant collecting that those types of things don't flip you out like they once would have. Um, pests aren't as scary to me now that they were even a year ago or two years ago, uh, just because I've, I've gotten comfortable with the idea that if you have a plant collection, especially a large collection, you're going to get pests. It's inevitable. Um, whether you see them or not, you probably have them now. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but with regularly checking your plants, like I said, if you can do it once a day, amazing. Um, you can really spot a lot of like massive problems before they get to be like out of control. But there's nothing wrong with just going around and if you see something squishing it or spraying it down real quick and moving on. At least you've done something. Um, and not just like kind of just left it, you know what I mean? It may not be the proper thing that you really should do to like, you know, to the best of your ability sort of situation, but at least you're doing something. You're not just completely ignoring it. So, um, can you do a video about sphagnum moss in general, like propagating with sphagnum moss, how to keep it moist? Can it get moldy, etc.? Yes, I can. I'm going to go write that in my notes right now so I don't forget. Video ideas. Note. Spag moss. Video. There. It's in my list. And if anybody ever has anything that you would like me to do a video on, you can always put it down in the comment section or send me a message on Instagram. Here's my Instagram account. Um, I'm always open for video ideas. I have uh, quite the list <laughs> of uh, video ideas that I have to get around to. So, uh, and I'm always willing to add new things to this list. So don't ever feel like you can't ask for something in particular. Um, it, there may be a point where I've already done that and I might reference you back to that video, but, uh, okay. Uh, oh, and do you think that if you get pests in an Ikea Mills bow, will the fans in there just blow the pests around from plant to plant? Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, 
Yeah, probably. I mean, I don't necessarily know that it would be the fan so much. I don't think that you should have a fan blowing hard enough to actually blow a pest from plant to plant. Now, keep in mind also, um, a lot of the pests that we have, with the exception of things like scale and mealybugs, have the ability to either fly or float. <laughs> I'll, I'll explain. So thrips actually can jump, uh, similar to a flea, uh, the adult thrips. And uh, thrips also, when they reach maturity, have wings and they can fly. They suck at it, but they can fly. So when you get an outbreak in a contained location like that, it, those are the, the situations where you probably need to treat um, thoroughly and probably quickly because things can get out of control in a small environment like that, like in a terrarium or in an Ikea cabinet or a greenhouse kind of situation. Um, uh, spider mites also, um, because they're spiders, they're actual arachnids, they do spin webs. So, you know, if, you know, you're walking through your house and a spider is like dangling down on a web, which, oh my God, just instantly gave me the willies. I have like serious arachnophobia. Um, so they can kind of dangle down on a web, the fan blows and it blows right into the plant next door, you know? So um, it's definitely something that you want to keep an eye on in an enclosed situation like a cabinet. Okay, moving on. I'm trying to get, I have so many more. I'm not going to get to them all. What kind of music do you listen to? Sunshine would like to know. Um, okay, so if anybody actually listened to my playlist, you'd think I was nuts. I have everything on there from like Nine Inch Nails to Johnny Cash and Dixie Chicks to um, salt and Peppa, and uh, I think I have some new kids on the block tunes in there. Um, I like all kinds of music and I, I don't think I could really uh, key into like one particular kind of music. I love country music, um, really of any genre, uh, any, or any decade really of country music. I like the old, old stuff, uh, Loretta Lynn, um, Johnny Cash, all those types, um, right up to the, the newer stuff as well. So there's some stuff that gets a little too pop for me, but I like the stuff that's not like super poppy, like that pop country. I'm not, not a crazy fan of that, but any, anyways, I love all kinds of different music. I am musically well-rounded. <laughs> okay. Next question. Helena. Uh, is there any plant that you know you can't keep alive but still love it? Calathea? <laughs> Polka dot plants? I, but you know what? I don't even really like love those. More Calathea. I would like to have more Calathea, but honestly, I just... I've, I've been, I've been jaded <laughs> uh, with, with those because I've just tried so many times. Now, maybe you know, being a little further on in my plant parent life at this point, I probably would be able to take one on and be okay with it. But do I want to? Not really. Um, I don't love them enough to, to spend the extra time and effort in those plants right now. Uh, I have the plants that I really like. I'm really a huge aeroid fan, if that wasn't totally obvious. Um, so that's kind of where my heart is. And I don't know if I would want to bring anything else into that. But as far as the collection that I have right now, there's nothing that I currently have that isn't living that I haven't figured out the care for. Did that answer the question? Did that even make sense? I don't know. Okay. Um, what is your favorite place to travel? Um, so I've been to Dominican... I've been to Mexico um, and I've been to uh, Miami, Florida, which was really, really cool. Super hot and humid, by the way. <laughs> it's a little too hot and humid for me. Um, but those were all beautiful places. But honestly, if I could just like pick up and travel right now, it would honestly, I would get in my trailer and we would just drive to like somewhere and just camp. I love that if we're, if we're thinking of like traveling in that regard. Um, I'd really love to like go overseas. I want to do the whole like European thing. I would love to go to um, 
my background is mainly Scottish and Irish. So I would love to go to Scotland and Ireland. Beautiful countries. I would love to see them. Um, England, Jordan's family is uh, uh, English and Welsh. <clears throat> so it'd be nice to go to Wales and see all of that over there. I'd love to go to Italy and Greece. Oh my God. I don't know if that'll ever happen in my lifetime, but those places are definitely on my bucket list. Well, we're getting close. Now, I only have been able to do the questions from, uh, these are only from YouTube. I haven't even dove into the Instagram questions, so maybe I'll try to do this again with some more questions, but honestly, this hasn't been well, and I've gone through three batteries, and this video is going to be insanely long. So I hope you didn't have anything else to do this weekend. Um, okay. <clears throat> that awkward plant girl... <laughs> I love that. Uh, top three beginner rare or expensive plants in your personal opinion as an experienced plant collector. That sounds like something I should do a video on. What do you guys think? I think I might save that one for a video. I'll write that in my notes. Um, also, do you have any philodendron campus part to annum tips? Thought I can answer. Um, those plants are, uh, really, really sturdy and hardy. <laughs> uh, you really don't need a whole lot of tips for those. They will just grow. They want to grow. They will grow. Um, some tips would be get it somewhere where that it can climb. They want to climb. They love to climb and they do it quickly. Um, if you can get it on something secure that it can climb up, you're going to see those bigger leaves more quickly. Um, they propagate really, really easily. Uh, I, chopped I chop mine continuously and they root within a week it's crazy uh in any medium that I've propagated them in perlite moss water doesn't matter they root really easily um what I'm doing with mine right now because it's just growing so quickly that like I put it on a moss pole and it's off the top of it in no time at all um is I've I think Craig Milron does this or did this with his and he kind of ran it up and then back down and then back up the moss pole so that's what I've kind of started doing and the stems on those are uh, bendable and malleable enough that you can do that and it's not going to snap where you couldn't do that with like um like what I don't know uh like a glorious or uh, a splendid or something like that. You couldn't do that with the stems on those. It just wouldn't work. Um, but with these ones, because it's smaller, um, and it's more of a viner than a climber, um, it's really, really easy to do that. So I, I'll let you know how that works, uh, eventually, but it's, it's already, um, grown up to the top of the moss pole down and now it's working its way back up and the leaves are starting to get really nice. So anyway, so that's a few tips. Get it climbing, get it secured on something. Um, it's just a really, really easy plant in my personal opinion. Um, okay. And last question for the day. Nikki, what motivates you to be a plant collector and how did your journey begin? That's a good question to end off on. Um, so I'll tell you how my plant journey began. I'm just going to give you a Coles Notes version. Um, so the way my plant journey began was that, uh, so my grandparents uh, had houseplants growing up. She was a huge gardener. She used to like win awards and things like that with her gardens. And so I grew up around a lot of houseplants. Uh, when I moved out, I always had houseplants in my own houses, apartments, etc. Uh, growing up. It has just been in the last few years where I noticed that it was socially acceptable to have an obscene amount of houseplants and um, have a place where I wouldn't be judged for that uh, as much. Um, so how I came upon this particular plant, uh, this portion of my plant journey is um, we moved into this house and there was no gardens outside. It was just grass. There was a bachelor that lived here. He really wasn't like a landscapey kind of person. And so um, I wanted gardens because I'm, I love to garden. So I, and I had never dug uh, a garden from scratch, like from grass to uh, to garden before. And I wanted to kind of see the process. And that led me to garden answer uh, and Laura and all of her videos, because she has a great video on how to dig a garden bed from scratch, um, if you're looking for that sort of information. So 
<clears throat> um, so I found her videos and then I started binge watching them. And then you know how YouTube does. They're like, oh, you may also like to watch this. And then I came across Plant Arena and then I came across Harley and then I came across Kaylee and then it was over. <laughs> it's all over from there. Uh, so that's kind of how the whole thing went down. Um, and the second part of that question was what motivates you to be a plant collector? Um, I just really like the, the feeling that I get when I'm able to successfully grow something. Um, when I buy a plant and I see it growing, I see a new leaf, I see a plant that wasn't doing so well and now it's doing really well. Just that, um, that feeling of, I don't want to say making something out of nothing, but like knowing that you had a hand in growing that plant to that size or, um, you know, I don't, do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just that, that, that feeling of, of growing something of being the reason that that thing grew a new leaf or grew that extra foot or whatever. I just, I love, it's very rewarding. Being a, a plant collector is very rewarding. And especially when you have some of these, you know, plants that tend to be maybe more tricky to grow that you finally nail down and you figure out how to grow them big and beautiful. It's just such an amazing and rewarding feeling. I'm losing my voice. <laughs> that, um, yeah, that's really just what pushes me. And um, with the collection that I have, it's a lot of work. Um, for example, um, I spent Monday and Tuesday this week from about seven o'clock in the morning until about six o'clock at night, uh, just doing regular plant chores. So watering all of my plants that needed it. Um, I don't even think I did any repotting. Oh no, that's not true. I repotted two plants uh, that really, really needed it. Um, so that's watering, fertilizing, spraying for pests if needed, uh, so on and so forth. So that took me just to go once through my collection and I probably didn't do the entire collection either. Um, I would say about 90% of the collection took me two solid days. So you really, if you want to have that beautifully curated collection, um, it does take a lot of time and effort to get it looking really nice and to have the plants be super healthy. Um, but it just depends on what your, your goals are. My goal is to make all of my plants, this may be completely like <laughs> pie in the sky, but I want all of my plants to look really super healthy, to be super healthy and to grow to the best of their ability in the conditions that I have. And so I really spend a lot of time um, learning about things and uh, putting all of the things that I know and learn as a practice to make my collection as nice as it can be. Um, and so I think that's one thing, like I was saying before, that you really need to sit down and kind of think about, like if it's, if it's something that you really want, um, you have to put the time in. So if you don't have the time, maybe reconsider, get a little more low maintenance plants. Uh, but yeah, I'm just rambling at this point. Oh my gosh. Ah, I am so sorry, guys. This has been an insane, crazy video. I feel like I've been all over the place and I'm going to blow through this battery. So I'm just going to go ahead, cut myself off because you know me, I can talk all day. I hope you enjoyed this whatever this was. Um, and I hope you could at least take even one piece of information from this. If, if something resonated with you somewhere, even if it was a small, insignificant little piece of information, then I feel like this whole rambly video was worth it. <laughs> Um, so let me know down in the comments if um, any of this information was helpful. Uh, I thank you guys so, so much for asking me all these questions. There were some really great questions. I didn't get to them all. There was a few that I skipped over. Ugh, it was just a lot, but it was super fun anyway, and I hope you enjoyed it. I'm really chatty today. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you guys so much for liking and watching and commenting and subscribing. 
If you're not subscribed already, please consider doing so. It is a huge help to my channel and I really do appreciate it. Um, also, uh, follow me over on Instagram at plants, pots, and whatnot. Uh, it is always linked down in the description uh, as well as my email if there's anything that you would like to email me. Um, also, if you like home decor and doing things around the home on a budget or renovations or, you know, organization or cleaning, go ahead and follow me over on my second channel, The Cheapo Chateau. I'd love to have you over there. I'm not quite as consistent over there as I am here quite yet, but we will get there. <laughs> Baby steps. Anyway, whew, okay. I love you guys so much. Um, and I'm going to say goodbye. So have an amazing and wonderful day, night, a week, month, and year. I love you all to bitty bits. And I will see you in the next video. Okay, bye. Mwah.